All right, I am uh, posting this for the second time. If you saw this pop up uh, earlier today, then uh, I'll just tell you I, I did that very quickly. I was testing some new things, and um, I got a little ahead of my skis, uh, so to speak. So I wanted to go back and just try. I think it's some worthy content and some interesting content. So I thought I would take another stab at it here and uh, try and add some uh, images uh, to help explain things as well as uh, one kind of grammar issue uh, that was brought to my attention very quickly. Uh, if you noticed in the title, we are I'm going to introduce this 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 thing called the the Beaufort gyre. And uh, during the move the video earlier, I was calling it something like the the Beaufort uh, gyre, which is close, but uh, not technically accurate. Um, and I'm not sure where I got that pronunciation from, but uh, I did get it sorted out. And so, uh, so Beaufort is an Irishman who, you know, did a bunch of, uh, came up with a lot of formulas and things and standards for sailing. And uh, gyre is, you know, as in like gyrate. So uh, it's an oscillation, a circulation. And in this case, we're going to be talking about uh, a water, an, uh, an Arctic Ocean current. Okay. And you'll see that in just a moment. But anyway, that's just why, if you saw it pop up and now it's popping up again, that's why I did that. Um, and uh, But the topic has to do with the uh, Arctic ice extent and how it is uh, lower than uh, expected. And, and the goal here is to show some very, very tangible real data to explain why and, um, and then also explain something about what might be happening in the future that we need to, I think people need to be aware of uh, related to this uh, ice extent. And that's where we get into the uh, the Beaufort gyre, okay? All right, so first uh, let's look at this. And, and uh, for uh, reference purposes, this is the uh, National Snow and Ice Data Center webpage. Uh, very simple, you can copy that down if you'd like and, and go navigate to it yourself. They uh, update quite often, in fact daily, uh, so you can see the uh, ice extent and the ice concentration and things like that. Uh, it's used by a lot of, you know, uh, people in the shipping industry and fishing and so forth. So this data is pretty accurate, right? It'd be it'd be hard to to fake it, so to speak, uh, or distort it uh, and misrepresent it because people rely on this and they have tons of observational data. They're out there in boats. So uh, it needs to be correct. Okay, so that's a little bit about this data source. Uh, and the pink line, and we're looking at December here, but that this is the, the last update. So I'm going to work with this picture. Uh, the pink line represents what they consider uh, normal. It's, it's just uh, it's the median ice edge between 81 and 2010, which was an, uh, a time of high ice extent. But nonetheless, um, you know, it, 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 we currently have less ice than we did for those years. Okay, and so uh, from that perspective, we are seeing a reduction in Arctic sea ice. Uh, the question is why. And if you looked at my previous videos, I've I've explained this side, this little bit here and this little bit here, the larger area of melt. And uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment, just to refresh, or if you haven't seen those videos dating back to February of 2017. But uh, there's some very hot spots in the ocean here, and uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that it's hot enough to cause uh, significant melting of the Arctic ice sheet. But we want to focus on this side. I haven't ever really talked about it and what might be causing this side. So we're going to look at that. Okay. Now, um, uh, to, to do that, uh, we'll start by going back to null school. I don't have this set up. I, I apologize. Let's go to ocean temperatures. We'll go to anomalies and look at this in a really simple kind of way. Um, okay, so what is the anomaly? I'm going to go, I think I'm looking at now. Okay, so this is current time and you can see a lot of warmth here uh, coming across in this lines of latitude. In fact, if I go all the way around, you'll see that this is the same lines of latitude. Uh, and we've got warmth here. Uh, in fact, if you continue around, same lines. <laughs> so the same distance from the Arctic, we have a very hot band 
warm band. And, and all these temperatures, if I click in here, are like 10 degrees higher than the 15-year average. That's what sea surface temperature anomaly means. So the water is not 10 degrees. It's 10.4 degrees above the 15-year average where I put that green dot. Okay. All right, but let's get back around to Alaska and our topic. Um, doesn't look too bad. Uh, a little warm. And you can make an argument for some melting, uh, given this. But if we, we've seen some real fluctuations this year. If we step back uh, five days at a time, and I'm just going to keep stepping here and watch what happens. Here it comes. See that warmth? I think that's good. Um, you can see, do you see the difference? Okay, this entire region is now warm. And this is on fire, 14.6 degrees above the 15 year average. All right, so we've got warm water that's working its way up in here, but we've also got, we've had some earthquakes uh, and we've seen some warm water coming up as a result of the earthquakes. We've had a couple volcanoes uh, going off, not currently. And not at this time. This is uh, January 11th we're looking at, so not that far back. If we zoom in, you can see this region here and how warm that is. That's going to be around 5.6 degrees, so just over 5, 6 degrees uh, in warmer than the 15-year average. And this water pushes right through this little area here. So the current goes into the Arctic Ocean through the Baltic Sea, uh, and it's pushing all this warm water up under the ice, melting the ice that should be here, and pushing that fresh water from that ice under the ice sheet in the Arctic. Okay, so there. Now you can see, and this is just you know one day, but you can see these kind of plumes, these uh, warming trends, and uh, I personally uh, call this uh, hydrothermal activity. Vents on the bottom of the ocean are getting very, very active in parts of the, certain parts of the world. Uh, and when that happens, you're sending 2,000 degree water up into the ocean, and, um, and that is giving us a surface temperature increase that's very, very visible and uh, certainly warm enough to melt uh, sea ice. And, uh, and cause what we're seeing with the reduction in overall sea ice in the Arctic. Make sense? All right, well, let's continue because there's something really interesting happening because of that. Okay, this, remember melting. Uh, the ice in the Arctic ice shelf is largely fresh water. It has some salt content because it's sitting in the ocean, but it's largely fresh water. So when it melts, you're adding fresh water to a salt water ocean. All right, and I think think, yeah, this here is an article. I want to scroll to the top so you can see this is a, a Yale Environment 360 article. So legitimate source uh, science organization. And uh, they're talking about a study in this article, how a wafered ar Arctic current could cool the climate in Europe. And they're talking about this Beaufort gyre right there. Okay. And I'm going to show you how this works in just a moment. Let's get down to their graphic. Uh, they talk about how um, ba -ba -ba -ba. today it holds as much fresh water, and there it is. You can see it, by the way, circulating this way, clockwise. Um, and so there it is circulating. Here's your warm water that we just talked about coming up through the Baltic Sea and into the Arctic Ocean. Over here we've got warm water coming up uh, the uh, European coast. Uh, and this is what we would call... Uh, water from the uh, the Atlantic conveyor belt. I, I suppose I should probably explain that a little bit. If we go back in here, you notice, you know, why isn't this frozen, right? If right at the end of my pointer there, uh, the finger of my, my pointer, uh, is the North Pole. Look, it's not ice very far from the North Pole, and yet this direction and this direction, it's frozen a lot more. What makes this not ice, right? Or, or water instead of ice. Well, it's this it's Atlantic conveyor belt is, is what it's commonly known as. And I've got a picture. And uh, 
if you know about this stuff, okay, this is a bit of a simplification, but uh, for the purpose of, of this video, it does a fine job of explaining it. Uh, warm water comes up from the equator, washes up the east coast of the United States, crosses the Atlantic, and comes right up here in this region that we we're talking about and looking at. Uh, as it moves, uh, it of course evaporates, giving rain and warm air to Europe. This is what keeps Europe nice and warm. Uh, instead of being as cold as Greenland and, and other Russia and things like that, right? So water heats the air that keeps Europe warm. See that? Water heats air, not the other way around. And then the, as it comes up here, because it's evaporating, the fresh water is evaporating out, making it more salty, so more uh, saline. And uh, as it does, well, salty equals dense. So it gets colder, salty, dense. And when it gets all the way up here, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean and creates a current that pushes back down to the equator, okay? And, uh, and it moves on around in a more of a complex way. But this is the part we're interested in, okay? Warm water comes up. It becomes salty, which makes it more dense, uh, and cold, which makes it more dense. It sinks and creates this conveyor belt. This conveyor belt is what keeps Europe nice and warm, okay? So with that said, let's close minimize that. Uh, what we're looking at is in this Beaufort Geyer, and if we look at the article, I'll just explain it to you. Every five to seven years, this reverses for just a little while. And when it does reverse, and I don't think we know exactly why it reverses, but it does, it dumps that fresh water out and kind of Re, kind of resets itself right to a proper salt content or, or salinity and um, and then it spins around and starts going clockwise again great news right incredible how this works thing is it hasn't switched directions in uh, 12 almost 13 years at this point so the amount of fresh water from all this melting and so forth that is built up under the ice sheet here in this Beaufort gyre uh, or gyre is enormous. In fact, uh, the article states that it is um, as much fresh water as in all the Great Lakes combined, potentially more. Okay, and it continues spinning uh, and so forth. So eventually, it's inevitable that uh, here it is the 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 gyre will inevitably weaken in reverse directions. Uh, and when it does, it could expel a massive amount of icy fresh water into the northern Atlantic. That, what that would do is it would, go back to our picture, shut down the conveyor belt. This flow stops. Okay? And uh, there's uh, geological records uh, and there's science that shows that this has happened before. And uh, it, it appears that we're on the edge of that happening again. You know, when? I don't know. Um, it could be any time, I suppose. But, um, but it's happened before, and when it does, Europe goes into a deep freeze. Uh, we wind up with things like a mini Ice Age type situation and things like that, right? So I just thought I would uh, kind of review some of this with you and uh, give you an opportunity to understand what's going on in case some of these terms start coming up in the news uh, anytime soon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as much as I, I wish um, man-made global warming was um, uh, you know, a, a significant factor, a factor worth considering, or, or um, you know, I, I use the analogy, if you throw a pebble in the ocean, have you affected sea rise? And the answer is yes, but it's so insignificant, you would never factor it, right? So CO2 is not... Uh, uh, a, a significant um, cause of any kind of climate change. It's particularly not man-made CO2. But as I showed you, we have hot water that's heating air, that's melting ice, that's leading to a lot of the things, the alterations of our jet stream and things like that that are causing some really strange things around the world these days as far as weather patterns and events. Um, underwater earthquakes, underwater volcanoes, uh, and uh, hydrothermal venting, things like that are going on. The crust is active, and it's it's uh, causing some heat. Now, what can we do about it? I, I, I think what we can do is start to educate ourselves 
Uh, this could stop this year. I don't know. It could continue on at a slow pace. It could accelerate even more than it already is accelerating. Um, I'm not the scientist for that, and I, I wish that more real scientists would start spending time trying to answer these questions. And, uh, and if they are, let us know what they're seeing, because right now everything in the public eye is CO2 and you know, man-made global warming uh, related. Uh, so it's kind of sad, and so I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention and, uh, and, and introduce some new terms and show you some interesting kind of weather uh, phenomena and uh, how they affect the Earth. Have a great day.